Even though our babies can't talk, there are lots of newborn body cues that can help us understand how they are feeling and what they need. But as a new parent, it can be really difficult to know what your little one is trying to tell you if you don't understand what these subtle facial and body cues are and what each of them mean. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to understand what your baby is trying to tell you using these subtle cues. Once you learn to read and understand these baby cues, parenting a newborn becomes significantly easier and it helps to strengthen the relationship between you and your little one. And this will help your baby feel less stressed and more safe and secure. A strong relationship with you is vital for your baby's social and emotional development. And research has shown that a newborn who had a parent who was responsive to their needs and career Directly identified their baby cues were less likely to cry in the future and were more confident in their interactions with others. So in this video we're going to cover what newborn baby cues are and what it all means. But before we do make sure you click on that free PDF document in the description box below which covers the developmental milestones you can be expecting for your little one in their first year of life. This will give you an invaluable peace of mind as you'll know when to be expecting certain skills and when to be concerned. Also, if you want to make parenting significantly easier, make sure you start now by subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell where you'll learn the tips and tricks I've learned over the last 10 years, practicing as a pediatric occupational therapist and being a mum to two children. Baby cues are how newborns communicate to us to tell us if they are tired, hungry, wanting to play or need a break. So let's talk about the baby cues your baby may use to say, I'm tired. When your newborn first starts to become tired, you will notice they start to lose interest in you and toys. So they'll start to look past you and their body will become really still. They'll start to yawn and rub their eyes or their ears and they might also start to suck their thumb. Now when you notice these cues, it's a really good idea to start getting your baby ready for bed because if you keep them up longer, then they're going to become overtired and that's when they start to get really fussy and start to have really large jerky movements with their arms and legs and it's really hard to get them to go to sleep because you first need to settle them and calm them down and then get them into bed. So it's a longer process all round. Remember in the first two to three months, newborns will sleep anywhere from 15 to 16 hours in a 24 hour period. And then when they're three to four months of age, that reduces slightly to 14 to 15 hours in a 24 hour period. Also during the day, zero to four month old babies tend to only be awake from 45 to 120 minutes. And after this, they're going to need a nap. If you want tips on how to promote newborn sleep, then make sure you check out my video on that, which will be linked above and in the description box below. Now let's talk about the newborn cues your baby will use to tell you that they are hungry. Generally newborns feed every two to three hours, but it's better to look for your baby's hunger cues rather than wait a set period of time before offering them a breastfeed or formula. Newborns give lots of subtle cues that they are hungry and ready to feed long before they start to cry. In fact, crying is a late hunger cue. Early signs of hunger are stirring, turning their head and opening their mouth in an attempt to try and latch onto anything. Now, if your baby has moved on from I'm hungry to I'm really hungry, what you'll notice is your baby has an increase in kind of body movements and they'll start to really stretch their arms and legs. You'll also notice that they'll bring their hands up to their mouth and start to suck it. Now, if we still don't pick up that our babies are hungry at this point, they will move to I am extremely hungry and get quite agitated. So this is when you'll see that they're really agitated in their body movements. So there's lots and lots of body movements. They also start to cry and they start to turn red. Now, if you wait until your baby cries to feed them, you are going to notice that it is really difficult for them to latch because when they're crying, their tongue tends to be at the top of their mouth, which means it's difficult to latch on in the first place. They will also have a kind of disorganized feed because they're so stressed at that point that they're not able to coordinate the sucking and the swallowing. And you'll also notice that because they're being crying, they start to fatigue really easily and quickly. So their feed itself is generally really short and then they're going to need to feed again pretty quickly afterwards. So do try and pick up on your baby's early hunger cues, which is where they start to stir. They'll turn their head and open their mouth to try and look for that food source. Now let's talk about the newborn cues your baby will use to let you know that they're ready and keen to play. When your baby wants to play, you will notice that their eyes are nice and open and really bright. 
and they will follow you um, when you're coming close or they'll turn their head towards the sound or if they're really young at that newborn stage they just start to look with you with their eyes they'll also keep an eye on some toys so if you're holding it above their head they'll be kind of following the toy with their eyes their body is generally really still and their breathing is very slow and content and at around three months of age they'll start to reach out to you with their arms to try and bat your face and touch your face or the toy that you're holding up above them You'll also notice that around four to eight weeks of age, your baby will start to kind of make some noises and they'll start to smile when you're interacting with them. And this all tells you that they're loving that interaction and they're really happy to play. When your newborn is telling you that they're keen to play, what you can do to make this play experience really enjoyable for your newborn is dim the lights in the um, room that you're in whether or not that's turning them off or lowering the blinds, just because when it's lower light, your baby's able to open their eyes fully and focus. You can also bring them closer to you so they can see best about the distance you hold them when you're breastfeeding them or feeding them the bottle. So if you bring them up in front of you so that they can see your face and nice and close, then you'll be able to have a really lovely interaction with them. Now, if you're wanting more ideas on what you can do with your newborn to play with them and foster that gross motor, fine motor and communication skills, then make sure you check out the video that I've done on zero to three month old activities. What you will notice is when you are playing with your baby or they're being passed around a lot, you will notice that they start to send you some really subtle facial and body cues to let you know that they need a break and they're a bit overwhelmed. So the cues that your baby will show you is firstly, they start to look away from you. So if you're playing or talking to them, what you'll notice is they start to look away from you. So remember when they're a newborn, their head naturally falls to the side because they're not able yet to hold it into the middle of their body. That happens at around three months of age. So when your baby's head is naturally falling to the side, as parents, we often get into their face or we hold some toys in front of their face but you'll notice your baby starts to look away from the toy or your face by turning their eyes away from you. They can't actually move their head, so look and follow their eyes. If their eyes start to look away from you, then that's them telling you that they've had enough and they need a bit of a break. Now, if we persist and continue to play with our little one, you will notice that they start to get a worried look on their face and then their arm movements and leg movements start to become really jerky and quite wild and then if we continue to persist and interact with them when they're signaling to us that they need a break they will start to arch their back and then they'll start to cry when your newborn is signaling to you that they need a break and you're interacting with them by talking to them or holding a toy above them and like a rattle and moving around their face it's a good idea to stop that activity and kind of change it and give them a break. So instead of doing that, you might put them underneath a play gym or put them near a window so they can look outside and have that quiet time. You could also try reducing the environmental stimulation. So that might be dimming the light, so putting the blinds down or changing the lighting in the room. It might be reducing the noise. So if the TV's on, you could turn it off or reduce it. Or if you're talking really loudly and there's lots of people, you might want to start to reduce that noise or take the baby into another room where it's a bit quieter. And if they're being passed around from one person to another, your baby is signaling to you that they actually find that a bit too much. There's too much touch at that point. So it'd be better if you would just hold them still and give them a bit of break or better still, they might want to go onto the floor. If your baby is also displaying these cues that they need a break, it would be also good to check the temperature, ensure they're not too hot or too cold, and also that they haven't soiled themselves or um, got their clothes a bit twisted and they're signaling to you that they're uncomfortable. Now, if you continue to engage with your newborn when they have shown you those early cues that they need a break, what you will notice is your newborn will start to have increased arm and leg movements so they come, become quite wild. You'll also notice an increase in tremors and startles. Your baby's skin color will also start to fluctuate so it might go from rosy to pale or really flushed. And there'll be a change in breathing patterns so it might become a bit more irregular and your baby will start to hiccup, sneeze, cough or gag. Then if you continue to persist with this then your baby will definitely start crying. So those are the newborn baby cues to let us know if babies are hungry, tired, 
wanting to play or needing a break. Remember, all babies are very individual, so just watch your baby and you'll start to identify the particular cues that they use to tell you what their needs are. And as you can start to interpret their needs, you are going to be responding to your baby, which in the long run means that they're going to be crying less in the future and they're going to be comfortable in the interaction with others as well as promoting an environment which is positive for that social and emotional development. Make sure you click on that free PDF document below and hopefully I'll see you next week where I'll share more parenting tips and tricks.